There are, there are two sides to management. There's the soft skill side and there's the hard skill side. And I've always looked at these and said it's too bad because the word should almost be reversed. The hardest job is the soft side. Trying to understand whether your leadership style is effective in an environment. Trying to figure out how you lead in a different environment, how you keep people motivated, how you keep things moving forward. Secondly, your leadership style defines the work environment. People will join you, will stay with you, because your leadership style gives them a clear direction of why it's worth working here. So be clear on what you're trying to do and be clear on getting a positive working environment so you attack the upside of this, not the downside. And last but not least, make sure the right people fit in at the right time. That's by far the most difficult job of management. Three fundamentals that have been known as soft skills, but they're the ones that deserve a lot of attention. You don't want these to happen just through osmosis. The hard skills are easier to deal with. That's the planning, organizing, and controlling the outcome. It's tangible, it's easily measured, you can quantify it, you can hold people accountable to it. But if I put those six things up there, and if you look at the bold words, those are the fundamentals of a management system. Those are the things you want to employ right now, more, ever than, more than ever before. You want to employ through the upturn, and you want to keep employing forever. This is the system of management that ensures the results come to where you want them to come. Let's talk about going forward now, if I can get this to move. And I, I saw this quote the other day that I thought was impressive. And they said, you know, it's interesting. The best companies do more than survive. What they do is they position themselves to thrive in the upturn. So let's finish by talking about how to thrive in the upturn. What are the things you need to do? What are the things you need to focus on? And let's talk about some of the things that you can do in the upturn. First, believe there's going to be one. If you don't think there's an upside to this, we have a whole different seminar for you that'll talk to you about how to liquidate your businesses, right? <laughs> if you don't think there's any hope, you're right. You know, if you think there's an upturn or if you think there's a downturn, you're correct. And it's based on what you're going to do in that environment. So first and foremost, you got to believe there's a reason to continue in business. There's, gotta, there's a reason to continue investing in your business. There's a reason to continue to operate your business. There's a reason to attract the very finest people to join your organizations. Secondly, be clear on your long-term goals, not just what you're going to do the next 12 months. Where am I trying to take this company, this organization over time? What are we actually trying to achieve over the long term, not just looking down at the end of our hood and saying over the next 12 months, these things will happen? Put an action plan together, simple, straightforward, focused on the stuff that matters. I'm not talking about an elaborate strategic plan. I'm talking about an action plan, but one that's longer than the next 12 months, longer than your current budget year. I'm trying to aim towards something. How much of that outcome can I bite off in a defined period? And make sure that you build your future business now while you're trying to stabilize your current business. Determine who the right customer is. Determine what the right products, offer, offerings, or services are. Make sure that you have the right competencies as an organization. What are you truly good at? And does anybody care? And if they do care, can you turn it into a business opportunity? I see lots of organizations go out there and talk about all the great things they're going to do. And for those of you who suffered me in a planning class, you know what I always say, who cares? Who cares what you want to do? You know, I've said this just yesterday in a planning class here. No one cares if you go out of business except you. Somebody is going to pick up the slack. So you're in business. You might as well make sure you're able to serve the needs of the customers. And so you make sure that you absolutely care about connecting right products, right competencies, right services to ensure that you not only live through this environment, you thrive and prosper coming out of the back end. Okay? What we must do right now, first and foremost, if you haven't done so, figure out who the key employees are. You can't afford to lose them. That is the muscle of the organization. And they're feeling the pain just like you are. It's important to keep these people motivated. It's important for them to understand that there is an upside. 
It's important that they understand there's a value to being connected with you and to your business. That you want to start talking about the positive side of this, not the negative impact of it. Secondly, you want to exploit your competitors' vulnerabilities. Uh, Mike, where are you? We were talking on the, I lost where he was, there you are. We were talking in the, in the hallway out there. I said, how's things going? He said, great. Things are going really well. And, and one of the reasons things are going well is he's a strong competitor and he's got weaker competitors who are going out of business and consolidating. Opportunity has popped up. Good people are available from good firms or from bad firms. Good business is available. Good equipment is available. And so what he's finding is there's potential and opportunity to be had right now if you look at the upturn. How do I prosper? How do I grow in the midst of all of this? Invest in your future now. And we heard earlier today, and I absolutely agree with it, the banks have a lot of money. It just isn't going anywhere. And so if you think about it, where does investment come from? You've really got four choices. Choice number one is you can put additional debt on the business, either out of your pocket or if you can convince a, a lender to lend, great. Secondly, you can add, add additional equity. You can find other people who want to take an ownership position in your company. You can go back to your friends, your family, and your credit cards, and you can add equity to your company. Third, you can do the best you can do in your business, take the proceeds of that business, and reinvest in other better opportunities. And four, the one we don't do enough of is we can figure out what we should stop doing that has no value and redeploy those assets, primarily time and money. So think about where your money is going to come from, but don't let yourself be lulled into believing that you haven't got the ability to invest in your business. You don't have a choice. You need to invest in your business to move it forward. <coughs> Last but not least, rethink your business model. Just because you've been doing things the same way for 127 years does not mean you ought to continue doing that. Are there better ways to go to market? Are there better ways to serve customers? Are there better approaches to finding the right customer? I thought of four, so I put them up here. First one is solution selling. And we'll talk a little about each one of these. But in effect, what is solution selling? That's dealing with the customer pain. The second type of selling up there is one that people don't do much of called provocation selling. Provocation selling is trying to figure out what should be keeping your customer up at night that they haven't figured out yet and helping them understand that risk. The third one is called sustaining innovation. That's looking at your current customers and trying to figure out what additional things you can add to their business that will add value to, for them and increase both your profitability and their profitability. And then certainly the fourth one is disruptive innovation, which is understanding the job the customer wants done and providing exactly what the customer wants at a price the customer is willing to pay that makes a margin and a profit for you. So let's talk about each one of these. Solution selling is a buzzword. It's been misconstrued forever. We, call, we think solution selling and problem solving are the same thing. Problem solving is identifying a problem and doing your best to stand up better than your competition to talk about it. Solution selling is quite different. Solution selling is first and foremost getting with the company and reaching a mutual agreement with the buyer or the company as to what the real problem is. You both need to be aware of it. You both need to identify it. You both have to agree on that being the major, most significant problem to address. Once you do that, you need to map out the process that you will use to attack this problem. What's my starting point? What's my conclusion? What's the process we're going to employ all the way through to address the issue we both agreed is the most significant issue in, our organi in my customer's organization? You both agree on the measurable impact. What's the minimum acceptable outcome that you need to, to, you need to provide for that customer they see it, and you see it, and you agree on it. And then what you're going to find if you can get into this kind of a world is that you build a relationship, and you get with the customer on an ongoing basis because you continue to follow up, you continue to work. This is quite different than problem solving. This says I've got to get into a customer. I've got to understand what the customer's thinking about. we both got to see the problem. we both got to attack the problem in a systematic way, and we both have to understand the result that can be made.